What's up, Blasters, and welcome to our final ski resort review of the 2023 season. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video. Today's video should be a banger since I'll be telling you about my all-time favorite ski area, Saalbach, Hinterglem, Leogang, and Fieberbrunn. As you can tell from the name, the area consists of multiple towns and multiple mountains. A grand total of 270 piste kilometers in a fairly decent balance of blue, red and black slopes. There are 10 mountains you can explore above these four villages and the lifts on each one have their own letters assigned, which makes navigating a breeze. The road signs themselves are not as good as they were in Schladming, but still above average. And because of the clear logic behind the lift letters, you always know which pistes lead to which mountain or to which lift. As you can see here, there are a large amount of blue pistes, which makes the resort very newbie friendly. But it still offers enough challenge for the more experienced skier or boarder. The black pistes here just hit differently. They are extremely fun to go down, they are steep enough to pose a challenge, and they're always well groomed. There are a few slopes here that are used for professional downhill ski races, which is proof enough that there are some quality runs here. I especially recommend the 1B and 1A slopes on the Schatberg mountain, which take you from the top all the way to the valley. Another brilliant piece is the number 36 run on the Zwilferkogel mountain, which admittedly only goes to the middle station, but it's long enough too. A special mention for the blue 2 and 2A run, which is probably the longest run in the entire resort, but in the mornings, when it's nicely prepared, it's a heavenly technique training ground. But of course, the main reason why I love Salbach Hinterglem so much is because of the Ski Circus Challenge. A completely mapped out tour of all four villages, all mountains, 32 different lifts and approximately 65 piste kilometers. This tour is a perfect method to scout out the entire resort, to figure out which of the mountains you prefer, which pistes look fun to ski, or even to help you decide where to go for lunch the next day. It's also just simply great fun to have a goal. You'll see many fellow skiers or boarders with the same goal and it's a great way to spend your day. In the end, you'll spend about two hours going downhill and the rest on a lift, but that's still above average for any ski day for me. The seven hour estimate given by the resort seems to be spot on for most enthusiasts, but if you're done quicker, you can just do more peace. Generally speaking, in the mornings, the pistes are beautifully prepared, truly as flat as a pancake. However, by 2 p.m., the piles of snow were literally everywhere, making it a lot harder to go down effortlessly. Not to mention all the people struggling who can make unexpected moves, which means you have so much more to look out for. This week definitely set a new record for amount of injured people on the piste that I encountered. I guess the warm weather is partially to blame for that, but still I would advise everyone to start early and have a late lunch, that way you can enjoy the piece for as long as possible. Because of all of this, I would still rate the piece 8 out of 10 blasties. Most of the lifts in Salbach Hinterglem are quite recent, with some exceptions. Most of them seem to average between 2000 and 2500 passengers per hour, which is great. Some of the older ones are being replaced with new ones in the near future, and you can even see which ones are on the list. In Fieberbrunn, however, you'll encounter some of the oldest lifts you've ever seen. The Lerchfilskogel lift has a staggering 700 passenger per hour capacity and the Streuböden isn't much better with 1250. And both of these lifts are part of the Ski Circus Challenge, so be prepared to be annoyed. Leogang, on the other hand, is top of the line, with heated chair lifts and a high capacity per hour. All in all, the lifts score 7 out of 10 Plasties.
The on-mountain bars and restaurants are above average in Saalbach Hinterglem, with a special mention for the Hendel Fischerei above Leogang, which is probably the fanciest on-mountain lunch I've ever had. Another winner is the Soul House in Saalbach, where they have the juiciest ribs prepared in their very own smoker. And even though it all felt quite pricey, the quality felt above average most of the time. Of course we can't review a resort without speaking about the Apres Key. In the past, Hinterglem felt like the place to be. But unfortunately, most of the nightlife burned down in the past couple of years. And now the Gostal is pretty much the only place to be for a great Apres Key experience in Hinterglem. Saalbach, on the other hand, is killing it with the Schwibs Bar, Bauer's Ski Alm, Post Bar Nightclub, you name it. Luckily, there's a night bus that takes you from town to town for just 5 euros per ride, as well as a truckload of taxis waiting on every corner if you're in a hurry. But as always, if you need any advice, just ask a local ski instructor. They're always the best informed about which place to go on which day of the week. When it comes to food, drinks and apres ski, I would give Salva Hinterglem 7 out of 10 blasties. That brings the total score for the Saalbach, Hinterglem, Leogang and Fieberrun Ski Circus to 7 out of 10 blasties. Have you ever been to Saalbach? Do you agree with what I'm saying? Or do you just have a recommendation for where I should go next year? Drop a comment down below and see you next time!